flower stage. I'd like to know what tips or advice do you have in regards to crop steering in the flower stage? Yeah, so I, I kind of mentioned a bunch of them there about the kind of changing the lights and stuff like that, the light scheduling. Yeah. But back, back to the light um, quality itself, again, kind of fairly standard now people know this, but, you know, increasing the light, uh, sort of the, the red end of the spectrum during flowers is important. I like to make sure I have that 730 in there, uh, na- na- nanometers as well, because, like I say, I like, I like the mechanism to work as it was designed and not necessarily to, you know, be maybe holding my plant back. But again, it's not always possible. A lot of the jobs that I've had and the facilities have a light that, you know, is limited to that, and that's what you're dealing with. So, but again, if, if, if I get to choose whatever I want to do, then that's I'll make sure that the light's capably going up that far. Um, I, although I was saying I was a, a little bit kind of like, you know, ease off with the feed and stuff like that. Um, if you're going to do it, now's the time to do it. You know, flowering, um, again, not not too harsh too early, but by week three, you really want to be really ramping that up. Um, if you're if you're a nutrient guy, you really want to be starting to push it. By the time you get to week five, really ramp it up. Now, again, if you wanted to steer a specific outcome over another, then that's where I would I would maybe change what you're doing with the nutrients. Um, I'll give you an example of that. Let's say your plant is is adapted to. No, let's go the other way. Your plant produces a high level of medicinal compounds, but it's not specific. It's not particularly well adapted to a cold environment, right? So, but you know that the facility that's growing this is going to get pretty cold at the end of the season. And you know what, what's one of the things you can do to to help with that? I've found that the temperature correlation between what a plant optimally grows at is, is very sorry. It's, the temperature a plant optimally grows at and what it can grow at is correlated with the feed schedule. So again, if you if you're growing slightly colder, you you ramp everything back, right? It, and and the opposite end of the scale is also true. If you want to really, you know, if you're in a hotter environment, you can actually push it a wee bit more. Um, within within reason, biochemistry in a plant operates optimally somewhere between twenty and thirty degrees, right? So when whenever we're in the lab and we're doing like maybe taking a sample from a plant, putting in a cell, keep, uh, a dish and keeping it alive. Usually we target like 28 degrees for that, um, something like that. So that gives you an idea of where the plant... Sorry, I'm talking about Celsius here, um, just just so your, your audience knows, because I know you, you, um, you Americans like to use the Fahrenheit scale. I'm not very good <laughs> at converting it, but, um, no but yeah, worries. I'm always talking in Celsius, apologise. Um, in a hotter environment, they can take more nutrients is what I've found. But the problem is you need to kind of balance that with, with more water as well, which is, well, you're just diluting your nutrient back to what it was, but just giving it overall more. You know, like there's that balance. Some plants will take more nutrients out than others, as you know, like some, some varieties especially. But I would say, like, so you're trying, to, you're trying to get this plant to be more tolerant to the cold. You dial back the nutrients a little bit and you, you allow the, the growth rate to slow and you precondition it that way. So, so you're basically, you've got a, a high medicinal compound producing plant. It's not particularly, you know, good in 19 degrees Celsius, right, for, for production. So what you do is you, 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 you grow it in normal conditions, say 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. Apologize to your viewers again for not using Fahrenheit. But um, you, maybe you can put a little um, overdub on this afterwards, Chris, to, to, to correct that. Um, uh, what you want to do is is, is grow it at the the, te- the the desired temperature at the um, at a reduced nutrient rate, and then when you move it across, for example, to a, to a lower um, temperature, you'll get away with. Uh, you basically what happens is all the growth will slow down a little bit, but the plant will be able to with, uh, withstand that and still finish to a decent level in that colder environment. So that's a little one of those dials that again doesn't get spoke about that much, but. Because everybody, it's, again, it's counterintuitive, right? It's like, oh, you want more out of the plant, give it more nutrients. It's not always the case. Sometimes you actually want to slow the plant down a little bit because if it grows too fast, it can't respond to the stress. And sometimes it has to sit in the stress. Okay, right, now I'm comfortable and now I can finish growing. So you don't want to be doing that during production, right? You want you want to precondition that. And obviously when I'm talking about taking plants and moving them, I'm, I'm talking about conditioning mothers and then taking clones from there. You can obviously do it with 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 vegetating clones as well, um, and you can do both. But the, the, the basically preconditioning, you can actually do it with seeds as well, Chris. You know, like, like setting seed in certain conditions will 
give you certain traits and and, and that condition uh, when when the seeds sprout. So so it's all about just that you know. I, I guess the, the overarching theme that keeps coming around here is is just this idea of like pushing the plant's ability to adapt, but giving it time to do it, make sure it knows what's coming before it comes. And then you'll have a much you'll have a much wider room for error for when you want to do this new thing. Like for example, in the example I just gave, dropping it, getting it to grow well at nineteen degrees Celsius. Um, you know, you want to give as much readiness for that as possible. You, you've, I've seen so many people fail by taking clones that are grown indoor only in, in Canada or outdoor in California. But, you know, and then they come into a, a glass house in, in Europe. And they wonder why it doesn't perform to the same degree. I think, well, that clone has not been in any way conditioned, maybe been hardened, but that's not quite the same as, as, as you know, what we're talking about here when we're actually steering the crop towards something. Um, I guess it's kind of like just changing the traits, changing the expression of those genes, but always limited by what those genes can do at the same time, you know. This clip is brought to you by AC Infinity. Use discount code Mr. Grow at 15 to save on any of their products.